So today when you think about the modern problem, I think a lot of people tend to focus on, you know, as soon as someone actually breaches my network, it's game over. And I think that the concept that people need to start to think about is really around, it's preventing a successful cyber attack from taking place. It's about preventing an attacker from ultimately coming inside your network and reaching your crown jewels. And using the analogy of you know, the Tower of London where the crown jewels are actually kept, we want to try and work out how do we prevent someone from ultimately getting to that room where the crown jewels are or preventing them from even blocking us from even getting access to those crown jewels in the future or taking a copy of those photo, uh, uh, taking a photo of all those crown jewels and then taking, creating a replica. Now, so when you think about it in your own organization, it's all about how do I have the ability to, one, try and prevent as much known bad things from coming inside the organization and limiting that. And then with the few people that I've actually got, and today in Australia, we've got 96% of all businesses are small to medium enterprises. 70% of those have got employees of less than 20. So when you think about it like that, we've got few people. And yes, whilst there's a lot of important initiatives around cyber capacity building, you know, the problem is still there today. And that's gonna take a long time for us to get some of these top talent to come in. But if you wanna think about from a attract and retain top talent, I wanna try and get to a point where an organization thinks about, let's move my, let's call it the analysts that are focused on those level one, 101 different problems that are out there to focus on more of the key tasks around sort of the hunt and the triage capability. So when you start to think about that, we need to be able to leverage automation as much as we can. Anything that's known, we simply should be able to prevent that from being bad. We should be able to reduce the attack surface and using that approach where people have always said, when you come inside an organization, you know, an attacker only has to be right once. Well, I need to be able to make it fundamentally hard that if they do come in, which is okay, the stopwatch starts at that point. And you need to be able to say, well, I've reduced the attack surface that limits their ability to move around and ultimately do something. I've got full visibility to see what's happening out there. So rather than my people focusing on 100% of the problem, they can say, well, let's focus on the 20%. And this is where they can really start to look at how does the attacker trip over? And every time they trip over because they've stolen your credentials or they've tried to gain access to a different application, each time I'm just thinking, you've just bitten off the apple every single time and I've caught you at each one of those access points preventing them from actually reaching their objective, which is to either steal your sensitive information, prevent you from getting access to it, or destroying the data altogether. So if I flip that around and say, how have we actually helped an organization that have actually applied that approach? We can think of two examples. One would be a small utility provider here in Australia that has got an extremely small team. So we're trying to move away from this concept that you need to have 500 security people inside your organization. So with this organization, leveraging automation, orchestrating their defenses to ultimately fight against an automated adversary, they were simply able to turn on the ability where they can say, let's prevent anything from known coming inside the organization. I know it sounds simplistic, but this particular organization said that there's many capabilities that people deploy today that are simply in a detect only mode. Now that's kind of the walking up to the scene of crime and just saying, well, great, I have saw it after the fact. So if we say, let's prevent anything that's known to be running around the network, that's considered to be bad, stop that altogether. At the same time, I limit the capability that people have around using applications. So this organization had 317 different applications in their environment, and they were able to whitelist and say, these are the only applications that are allowed to run in my organization. They then turned around and said, there's different types of departmental groups that can gain access to those applications. So I've just now limited the attack surface that an attacker has. They're able to start to limit based on the credentials that are used and force multi-factor authentication to take place for every single application without re-engineering some sort of single sign-on process to every single one of those apps. So at the same time, when something new comes into the environment that's considered to be unknown, the clock starts ticking. But we have multiple vantage points every single time along that attack life cycle, the cyber attack kill chain, as some people know it as, to stop the attacker. And it's not simply a case of it's one to six or one to seven steps they will probably try three to four or even a thousand different steps to get to that point. And our challenge as a, as a defender is to have the ability that we can see those flags every single time they get to that point. And that's where that utility provider is today. They're now focusing on some of that higher level work. They're leveraging automation to orchestrate their defenses. The few people are now focusing on the most critical targeted things, uh, attacks and events that are popping up and dealing with that in real time. Today, that organization is running textbook according to best practices when looking at security operations. SANS best practices talks about the fact that you should be processing 15 cases per hour. That gives an analyst four minutes. Now, if an attacker knows that today, 
All they simply have to do is launch hundreds of thousands of events per second, and that just simply inundates the SOC analysts. So if I clear up that noise, I'm now focusing on the high level work, and that's where I can start to triage to identify what's happening. Now, if I flip that around and work out, well, how have we helped a different type of organization? And I look at the financial services. Financial services typically are not organizations that are run with one or two people. Obviously some of the smaller ones, but in this particular case, one organization, I've got a good couple of people, about just shy of 100 people working inside their own organization. They're running the, the gamut in terms of multiple technologies that were never designed to interoperate and work together. They were basically having the ability where they were simply looking at what did happen and always retrospectively looking at what's going on. They had been breached, obviously once bit and twice shy, they're now trying to think we need to change our own mindset and ultimately prevent this from happening again. They had that top-down approach, the executive buy-in to understand that cyber risk is ultimately a business risk to their own organization. So by having the two things, I guess, crashing together, they started to say, we have to change and do something different. So now what they're focused on is really trying to ensure that whether someone gets in to the organization and getting in can happen multiple different ways. But what we're trying to work out is whether it's through malware or it was non-malware related attacks, we simply want to work out how do we reduce that attack surface. This financial institution is now at a point that they are able to really quickly correlate and work out that someone has actually compromised or come through their perimeter, breached some sort of endpoint, but we've basically limited the ability where they can't spread inside their own environment. One machine could be compromised, and even if one person was to click on an email, so to speak, on a bad phishing email that comes through, then we limit the damage and exposure to the organization. Because ultimately the job for us is all about preventing material damage or impact to an organization. And the only way you can truly achieve that is when you're focusing on looking at the full problem of the attacker or their methodology, preventing that successful cyber attack from taking place. And if I start to orchestrate my defenses and clear up a lot of the noise, as this financial institution has actually done, then they're at that point that they could start to focus on the more critical things, the true unknown unknowns, and stop that from happening inside their own organization.